everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Uh, as you can see, we are getting the business in uh, Houston, which is not unusual this time of year. Uh, been heavy rains for a, almost every day except one this past weekend, starting Sunday off uh, with more rain and uh, they're releasing the water on, I think, at least three or the four uh, major lakes that surround Houston, uh, which means that definitely will be flooding. Where I'm at won't be a problem, but some people are going to get it. This is the life of a Houstonian. Anyway, I'm here to talk about this whole Brian McKnight and how he defined his relationship with the children from his first marriage and the fact that uh, he tried to do a show in Detroit and got drugged so much prior to the show via social media and the radio uh, that he had to cancel. Uh, I want to talk about that on a couple of different levels, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, you know the routine. If you like what you see in here, click the share, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. Uh, if you believe in the work we do beyond the content we put on social media, which includes advocacy for children in uh, schools, uh, advocacy for the incarcerated, advocacy for abused and battered women, uh, incarcerated men and women, uh, mental health issues, the research center that we've been running for over 30 years, uh, and the over 80,000 hours of research I've personally conducted into the plight of blacks over the last 35 years, and the programs that have come out of that. If you, do, you need more information, the link to the site is in the description box. Go check it out. But also the way that you can support this work so that it can continue it's in the description box. Show some love, show some support. The work that is needed does not come without a cost. Okay, look, I've been following this whole, and, and, and let's just say, I have been a fan of Brian McKnight, Brian McKnight uh, since the dropping of the first album, fan of his brother in Take Six, uh, before that. So, this is one of those things where you go, dude, what are you doing? Uh, but as you know, no matter who it is, when I see something that I have an issue with, I'm going to speak on it. I don't have a fanatic mindset about teams, celebrities, anybody. Anybody can get it when they're out of line because I'm about truth. And I want the people that I make myself accountable to to give it to me if I'm out of line. I don't, that whole mindset of giving passes is a part of why we are where we are right now. So this isn't a hate of Brian McKnight. Probably got at least one kid by this dude's music. So it's definitely not that, but what it is, is the mindset that he's, he's moving and operating from right now is troubling to me. And I am going to immediately say, I don't know the whole story, but I have been following it for a while. So I know both sides, uh, at least some of it. So uh, Brian McKnight has, I want to say at least three kids, two boys and a daughter, if I'm correct. And I could be wrong, but I know at least two boys. And I think two boys and a daughter or three boys and a daughter from his previous marriage with his, with, you know, with his first wife. And, you know, those kids, and I've seen him put the, the two of the boys on with him and the cats can sing, they can go. Um, and he put them on and he brought them on some things he was performing on. He showcased them. And for whatever reason, his, his assessment is they didn't have the work ethic. They didn't want to put in the work. They just wanted to sit around and smoke weed. They didn't want to do this. They want to do that. And he gave them the opportunities. He was there for them. And they just thought it was going to come easy. And it didn't. That's his version. Uh, their version is that, that he's never really supported them. He's never really gotten behind them. Now, I've personally seen him put, him, put them on shows. But putting them on a couple of shows doesn't necessarily mean that they got the support that they desire or that they needed or that they felt they needed. And one of the things as a person who operates in, in the area of psychology and mental health and understanding how relationships work, one of the things you have to do as a person is when somebody's making a plank, complaint is acknowledge the complaint. Validate the complaint without validating the accuracy of the complaint. What that means is say, I hear you and I understand that that's truly how you feel. 
and because it's true how you feel, it's having a negative impact on you. It doesn't mean that what they're saying is accurate. It means that you hear them saying it and you know that it's an issue with them. Uh, it's, 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 it's so much better than just being completely dismissive. You can get to the bottom of it from there. So even if their assessment of what he's doing wasn't true, that still has to be an acknowledgement, especially from the more mature individual, that, hey, you guys are on something now. Hold on, let me also say and frame this that we have to be careful in looking at this from the obvious because Brian, uh, Brian's uh, PR people are horrible or he's not listening to his PR people because the things that he is saying is hard to frame in, in, in any particular positive light and that's a problem, but I'm, I'm gonna get to that. So anyway, this is the thing. They're saying this and he's saying this now. That was then. Fast forward a few years ago, because this is a few years when I first started forth. So this isn't something new. This has been an ongoing issue that has escalated. Brian gets remarried. And this is where it gets interesting. Brian gets remarried, and in getting remarried, he has another son. Now, Brian already has a Brian Jr. So Brian changes, legally changes his name so he can name the new kid Jr. And when they start making issues, his kids um, start making an issue about what's going on. Brian's response is that the kids are evil. They come from an evil act, whatever the hell that means, because I'm almost certain they were married when they had the kids. But even if they weren't, uh, I think that's a very poor statement and I can't get the clarity out of where he was coming from when he made that statement but he made it nonetheless now a lot of people will sit up and say that exes can be bitter uh when they lose and you know it's over and they can exes can be very bitter they can be very dark they can turn kids against you uh I've experienced this in my own life where they will use the kids as pawns and, 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 and wage warfare through the kids. And that's, that's shameful, uh, that's sad, but it really happens. And we cannot ignore the fact that that happens. My problem is in what I can actually see happening right now. No matter what that woman did, no matter how she may have played things. And once a kid is turned against you, the way they treat you and handle you can be disrespectful. And if you've done nothing to warrant that disrespect, you have an absolute right once they become adults to sit up and say, once they can sit up and say that, once they sit up and say, um, that they show you that they're gonna be disrespectful, you can literally sit up and say, you know what, uh, I'm not dealing with it. And I have a very simple rule with my kids. The rule is as long as you're respectful, I'm always accessible. The moment you become disrespectful, I will shut it down until you can get to a point where you can respect me. It's never going to be, uh, it's, it's over. I never want to talk to you again situation, but it will be, you will respect my space and you will respect my role. And if you can't, you have to go somewhere else because I will not tolerate it. I will tolerate you telling me how you feel, even if I don't like what you're saying, but I will not tolerate the disrespect and how you say it. Um, I've earned that right. And if you don't think I've earned that right, then you go over there. I'm going to stay over here. This is what we're going to do. There will be a way that I'm dealt with and I have a right to determine that. Uh, I'm not pushing you away. I'm not denying your feelings, but I am saying there's a way to get to it. And it's not by you coming at me sideways. So with all that being said, here's my problem with what, what happened with Brian. Brian comes out and calls the kids evil, said they came from an evil situation and nothing good can come out of them. Uh, now they've been dragging him for several years uh, in the media. And here's the thing that worries me. You go get with this is very important. What seems to be a non-black wife and you have a biracial child and you literally disrespect your seed, your, your, your first seed by renaming yourself to, to make this child a junior, which is an ego trip in, a, in and of its own, in and of its own. Um, then you call those kids evil publicly 
whatever beef I've got going on with my kids is my between me and my kids. What they and, and even if they make it public, I'm not doing it public. I've had that happen not just with my kids, but with past relationships. I'm not going to make my situation public. You can do what you want. I can't control what you do. But what I can do is control who I am and how I'm going to move and how I'm going to operate. And anybody that I love, and just because something's going wrong doesn't mean I don't love you. Anybody I love, I'm not dragging. I'm not sitting up. And if, even if that means me not explaining my side and me looking like the bad person, I'm a big boy. I've lived my life long enough to have laid a foundation and a pattern of who I am. And the people who matter to me know who I am. The people who don't, you just have to jump in where you, where you fit in and figure it out but I'm not going to sit up and wage war with the people I love in a public environment that was the first mistake but the, the second thing is there can be at times and again I don't know the story so I'm not going to sit up and pretend I can tell what this woman is doing but I'm saying some of the times what happens you get with this woman and they will escalate it they will make it worse than it is they will push uh, the dissension between the man and his previous household, his previous previous family, previous spouse, and his children by that relationship and escalate it. And he will feel an allegiance to this new marriage, this new wife, and this new feeling that he has and all this stuff. And he will go all out to establish this is who my allegiance is with and this is what I'm doing. And at the same time, be out of line because your seed is your seed. And it doesn't matter that you didn't get it right with their mom. That's still your seed. Now he goes on and he says all this. And then my whole thing is what I'm going to So I'm, I'm thinking to myself, if he's saying this publicly, if he's publicly denouncing his seed, his bloodline, he, he has to be saying, I'm done with entertainment. I'm done with it. I'm walking away from it. I'm just going to live my life because I'm tired because he can't possibly expect the black community to support that. Now, this is before I hear that uh, he, he, he uh, books, he's booked to uh, do a concert in Detroit and they drag him on social media, they drag him on the radio so much that the show has to be canceled, canceled and people are getting their money back and everything like that. And this is gonna be the norm and I have no problem with that. I have a problem with punishing people for mistakes that impact their ability to make a living to a certain point. I think that you spend your money in endorsement. What I mean by that is I'm never going to spend my money in something that I in, or someone I don't believe in. I have no problem supporting black business. I have no problem supporting black celebrities. Uh, it's something that I love to do. Uh, but what I won't do is support a black celebrity that's behaving in a way that I cannot endorse because I am co-signing it with my dollar. So I think that while I'm not for counseling people, I am for saying as long as you're behaving the way you're behaving, I will not support you. I will not enrich you while you are actually shitting on my values. And I think that's something that we really and truly need to acknowledge. And I just have a way that I think that we as men need to act. And this is not excusing black women. This is not saying that some of the stuff that I know black women do um, is okay and that it needs to be accepted and they need to be given a pass. No, they need to be checked and they will be checked. They will be held accountable on this channel. But what I am saying is you can't be a leader if the buck doesn't stop with you. You can't call yourself a king. You can't call yourself the head. You can't call yourself a leader if you're trying to match the energy of the person you're supposed to be covering because that energy may not be right before. Might may not be right at any given point, but your energy has to be on point at all time. Why? You're the leader. You're the head. You're setting the tone. You're setting the pace. You're literally uh, lacing the direction. And if you're trying to match them because of what they're doing and how they'll be, if you're sitting up going, well, they're doing this, that's the very definition of a non-leader. Don't tell me what they're doing. What are you going to do? Because what they're doing is definitely leading to something devastating, something 
uh, destructive. You can't be the leader in leading into that destruction. You've got to be able to move. And even when it doesn't feel good because you feel like you're being mishandled, you've got to make the decision that's going to be the best for the, into the total and the entirety of what you're responsible for, not based on a moment in time that you're made to feel discomfortable, I mean, uncomfortable or disrespectful. I mean, or disrespected. So again, that's my take on it. Uh, I think that canceling the show was what was needed to do. Uh, he needs to really think and he really needs to look at how he's going to move from this point forward, how he's going to handle who he is going to be with, uh, regardless of who he's going to be with, how he needs to treat his children. It's really that simple. So on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get off of here, uh, go in and try to get some relaxation time in with the guys, and then I'm gonna actually get back to work later on today, but I had to drop that on you. So on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.